from this off. We have JC at the uh, pulling the trigger for us. We brought in some new receivers, uh, small guys, but they have great speed, and we're expecting uh, big things from the run and shoot. Colorful Jack Goda returns to coach the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, where he has always had a great defense. This year, I, don't, I would think it's not any difference. We're a pressure-type defense. We're coming after you. We're, we're a gambling-type defense, and I think that we're pretty tough. We'll find out in just a few minutes. And now for our Sports Sunday presentation, the CFL on CTV presents live from Taylor Field in Regina, the Ottawa Rough Riders and the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Good afternoon, everybody. Believe me, we have summer in Saskatchewan. It is very hot and it is also very breezy, which should make it interesting for this matchup of Rough Riders today in the sunshine. Well, so far in this first week of the new CFL season, the Western teams have two wins, the Eastern teams one win. And believe me, Coach Joe Moss and his Ottawa troops would very much like to get back on an even keel in interleague so far. I think it's going to be an interesting game with a pretty good crowd on a summer Sunday in Regina. Now let's meet our commentators in the booth, Dale Isaac and Frank Rigney. Thank you very much, Al. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to Taylor Field. We had a good football game on Friday night in Edmonton. We look forward for a very interesting matchup this afternoon, Frank, and both these two clubs have question marks. There's no doubt about that. Well, Dale, I think the, the key to the Ottawa Rough Riders' success defensively is going to have to be up front. They have four new defensive backs out there today, and Dickie Adams, the uh, defensive backfield coach, says Greg Marshall and that front seven have to get pressure on the Saskatchewan quarterbacks or they might be in trouble. They, of course, are now the third team in the CFL to be operating the run-and-shoot offense. And, of course, the man who is at the controls for Ottawa, J.C. Watts, and he definitely has the talent to play this offense. Well, J.C. has a natural ability, Dale. He can run with that football, buy himself a little time, and hit those quick passes, and that's absolutely essential when you talk about the run-and-shoot offense. Jack Goda believes he has built a strong defense here in Saskatchewan, but offensively right now there is the big question mark at quarterback. Joe Pawpaw will be the starter this afternoon, not so much because he earned the starting position in preseason, but Homer Jordan, the man who was ticketed all winter long to be number one, has come up with an injury and really hasn't played much. There is a difference between these two quarterbacks. Joe Pawpaw, definitely a, a straight drop back uh, type of quarterback. He will not run with the football. Homer Jordan will if he gets in this ball game. We'll find out when we come back. This CFL telecast is brought to you by... From war and void, oh Canada, we stand on war for thee. For thee, for thee, for land, glorious and free. Oh Canada, we stand on war We're just about ready to go here at Taylor Field, and Larry Rohan is the man in the black cap today. Larry will be the referee for the contest, and there's a look at the rest of the officiating staff. Take it away, Dale. Thank you very much, Al. We're just about set to go here, and the Saskatchewan Rough Riders will be kicking off to the Ottawa Rough Riders to get this football game underway as we cap off the opening, uh, opening weekend of the 1984 schedule in the CFL. And, of course, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders uh, defeated the Ottawa Rough Riders twice in 1984. And that was the only occasion Saskatchewan was able to sweep one of their opponents last year. Of course, both teams in with new coaching staffs. Jack Goda and George Brancato in Saskatchewan were both head coaches at one time in Ottawa. Joe Mass, one time an assistant here in Saskatchewan. It'll be interesting to see how Saskatchewan tries to the defenses run and shoot. Brancato says they're going to try to hit those receivers coming off the football. We'll look for it. One of the newcomers, Derek Zeno, on the return for the Ottawa Rough Riders, and he brings it out to the 25-yard line, met by three Saskatchewan Rough Riders, led by Billy Jackson, a return of 25 yards. And the Ottawa Rough Riders will go on offense with J.C. Watts at quarterback. Timmy McRae and Jim Reed are the running backs. And the receiving core for Ottawa, Wayman Allridge, of course, 
is a returnee at one wide receiving position. The other three starting receivers, new people. Derek Zeno, Tony January inside, and Mike Williams, the other wide out. First down, Ottawa. The ball spotted at their own 24-yard line as we're just underway at Taylor Field in Regina. Quickly, J.C. Watts goes to Raymond Allridge. He slips one tackle and is cut down from the side by Billy Jackson, number 45. It was initially Kenny Hinton that Allridge had gotten past, and he takes the ball to the Ottawa 28-yard line for a pickup of four yards. The offensive line for Ottawa, Mike Hamilak, the new center, Nick Benjamin. Highly regarded rookie out of Concordia and the high draft choice. And the front three defensively, Gary Doolin, of course, big daddy, a former Ottawa Rough Rider, starting at that left end position. Gold send more also on the front three. It's second down and six for the Eastern Riders. J.C. Watts going deep to a wide open. Tony January and getting back there to knock the ball away was Terry Irvin, number 32. Well, Eddie Ray Walker, the left halfback on that side, also helped out a little bit, but the veteran Terry Irving in his ninth season still got that good speed. Set a club record last year for interceptions with 11 of them and only played 15 games, missed the 16th game due to a knee injury. A real contrast deal in cornerbacks of these two teams. Nine-year veterans on both sides for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, Terry Irving and Ken Hinton. The Ottawa Rough Riders have two rookies playing those key positions. Low snap, but Ken Clark gets the punt away. Fran McDermott on the return. Clark the ball in Ottawa territory and then gets down inside the 50-yard line. Rick Soietta, number 75, making the tackle on Fran McDermott. Saskatchewan Rough Riders with Joe Powpaw at quarterback will enjoy great field position as they take over the ball. Greg Ellis, Robert Reed also in the backfield in the receiving core. Mike Collimore is a former Ottawa Rough Rider. DeFrance and Elgard, big, strong inside receivers. Michael Elarms is new. He spent 84 with the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, although he didn't get to play. That was a seven-yard return by McDermott after a 27-yard punt, thus Saskatchewan enjoying great field position. Good protection for Joe Powell going deep down the middle to Chris DeFrance, and he tried to make one of those spectacular Chris DeFrance type of catches. Got one hand on it, Ricky Barden providing the coverage. Dale, interesting to talk to the Ottawa coaching staff before the ball game. Watch as they come with the blitz on the very first play. I asked them if they would blitz a lot in this ball game. They did not think they would early on because they didn't want to put these young guys in man-to-man -man situations too much. But they certainly did on the first play of the football game. Saskatchewan enjoying very definite wind advantage here. Second down and 10 from the Ottawa 47-yard line. Penalty marker line of scrimmage. Ottawa appeared to be offside. Ray Elgard makes the catch at the 40-yard line. The ball drops loose, picked up by Michael Elarms and steps out of bounds at about the 37-yard line. Steve Hirsch was the man who appeared to knock the ball loose and then Outley came in to help him defensively. And then Elarms picked up the fumble. Flags at the line of scrimmage. Larry Rohan, the head official, discussing the call with the rest of the officiating crew. Ottawa appeared to be offside on the play. Chris Siegler, the safety, was blitzing on it. Once again, in two plays, they've come twice now, so Dickie Adams was maybe disguising his defense to us, too. You know? mm. Wasn't well, going to tell you anything. Illegal procedure, Saskatchewan, offsides Ottawa. We'll watch it replay again. Well, down over again. It'll be second and ten. Robert Reed. Well, you can Legal see the motion. infraction there. I did not see the motion by the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Robert Reed coming off the field now. Uh, Saskatchewan will go second and ten. We're just into the first quarter of this football game. There is no score. Robert Reed. Replaced offensively by number one draft choice, David Conrad for Saskatchewan. They're looking at second down and 10, deep over the middle. Conrad has a first down, the ball pops loose. It is picked up by Ricky Barden. The first turnover of the football game goes in favor of Ottawa, and he's got some room to run. Ricky Barden brings it back out to the Ottawa 35-yard line. The completed pass to Conrad, and then he coughed it up, and the Ottawa Rough Riders have the ball back. Ricky Barden, who's really the old man of that secondary, he's got five years' experience. Everybody else a rookie. <laughs> Anybody has been around there for a day and a half is an old man in that secondary. David Conrad had just come in the ball game for an injured Robert Reed and fumbles on his first reception of 1985. 
And the first turnover. Looked like safety Chris Sigler may have uh, been the one that knocked the ball loose. J.C. Watts, one hopper to the far side intended for Mike Williams, number 21. Wide receiver to the right, who is out of Drake University as you look at the linebacking core of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. James Reed, of course, former Blue Bomber, spent the past couple of years in the USFL. And James Capers, who Saskatchewan obtained from Winnipeg. The defensive backs, the only newcomer in there is Eddie Ray Walker. He beat out the veteran Steve Johnson for that inside halfback spot. Second down and 10, Ottawa from their own 35. Watts throwing complete. Ball is stripped away, and it is incomplete. Tony January in and out of his hands as he was spun around. Looks like Eddie Lowell may have picked it off. There is a penalty marker down. Back near the line of scrimmage. Boy, defensive backs on both sides of the football doing a good job of stripping the ball from the receiver. Just after it got there, it was Glenn Suter, 27, I think, that stripped that one. Marched off against Saskatchewan. It'll be a first down Ottawa as they'll move it from the 35 up to the 50, up to the 50, a 50 yard, 15 yard penalty. I think it's going to be roughing on goals. Major foul in this area, roughness 63, Saskatchewan, first down. Costly penalty against a nine year veteran out of Simon Fraser. First down on the 50. BC Lions, number one draft pick in 1978, and a free agent signing with Calgary in 1983 and then he was released and the riders picked him up last year. It's down from their own 50. J.C. Watts again throwing a one hopper out there towards Williams. That's twice now he's tried that and just hasn't got the ball to him. He's second down and 10. Second and 10 at the 50. Mike Williams number 21 was cut by Miles Davis down in the USFL and so he had some familiarity with the run and shoot and he was grabbed immediately by Joe Moss and signed with Ottawa. Second down and 10. Penalty marker. Ottawa looked like they had crossed the line of scrimmage before the snap of the ball. Terry Irvin went high and picked it off. Great interception by Terry Irvin. As I mentioned, he set a club record with 11 last year, and he's got one in 1985. It's a beauty. Intended receiver Mike Williams, and it looked like he was open for just a moment. JC might have floated that one just a little bit too much, Dale. Well, he's throwing into that wind, too. Well, we and talked about the recovery and the speed of the veteran Terry Irving on that cornerback spot on the left side on the very first play of the game. Boy, he showed it once again in spades. Ottawa, decline. First down. So the penalty against Ottawa is declined. The interception by Terry Irvin will stand. It's first and 10. Saskatchewan, the ball at their own 28-yard line. We have no score and 10-46 remaining in the first quarter. Sack or interception. There's no score, and we'll be back to Taylor Field in just a moment. In 1840, the skills of the coppersmith were an important part of the fine brewing tradition of Carling Black Label. For it was he who fashioned the copper kettles to the high standards demanded by the brewmaster. Work that resulted in a quality beer famous for its taste. Carling Black Label. Today, we still brew a beer you'll enjoy now, as people did then, at a price you can appreciate. Carling Black Label, a great beer at a great price. He has been with the club for about four years. Willie Thomas, of course, coming over from Calgary in that three-for-three three trade just prior to training camp. Joe Pow Pow hits Ray Elgard, and the big inside receiver has a first down, and it takes four or five Ottawa Rough Fighters to stop him. Elgard gets it up to the 44-yard line for a gain of 16. He really did use his size to advantage, didn't he, Dale Watts? After Elgard makes his reception, he's 6'3", 225 pounds in his third year with the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, and he's tough to bring down. Here's the interception. Watch Terry Irving go up for that football. Back to the live action. 
Craig Ellis with his first carry of the ball game and doesn't get back to the line of scrimmage thanks to Greg Marshall's efforts defensively. There is a penalty marker. Look at this. <laughs> Terry move in there with good timing. It's perfect. He missed the last game of 84 with that knee injury, speaking of Terry Irvin, and then did not get back into action until the third game of preseason this year. Holding, Saskatchewan 65, first down repeated. Veteran right guard Neil Quilter, who missed 11 games last year because of a broken leg, defensively for Ottawa. We talked about Greg Marshall. He, of course, leads that front four. Jack Williams, not all bad either on the other side. Tom Towns, 10-year veteran of the Edmonton Eskimos, now starting for Ottawa. And boy, are they ever pleased with him, Dale. Rail guard again, coming across the middle, and Joe Pow Pow hits him out to the 50-yard line. First making the tackle and a 17-yard gain for Elgar. They'll spot it at the 51, and he'll be about three yards short of the first down. Good throw by Joe. That'll make you aware once again that Saskatchewan has a big wind at their back. Ottawa would be quite happy to have them play in this between the 35-yard lines, the alumni area in the field. <laughs> All right, second down and three. Saskatchewan straight ahead. Hand up David Conrad squirts through there across midfield in Ottawa territory. Sovieta making the tackle on him, and he has a first down as Conrad has replaced the injured Robert Reed now for the last two series in favor of Saskatchewan. The defensive backs and the only returnee, Ricky Barton, the rest are new. Outley, Hurst, Sigler, Broussard, all rookie imports, and they are using the total of five imports in that secondary for Ottawa. First down, Saskatchewan at the Ottawa 54-yard line. Alpau looking quickly left, coming in the middle, hits Michael Elarms. Touchdown, Saskatchewan. Five-yard scoring play, Michael Elams, the little guy out of Angelo State at 5'8", 170, and a beautifully thrown football by Joe Popo. And Dale, a great read by the veteran quarterback because he saw that blitz. You'll see the linebackers all coming on this side, trying to put the pressure on Joe Popo. He knows it's man-to-man -man coverage. We stop it right there. You'll see the receiver at the top of the screen. He's looking right there, right off the bat, because he knows it's man-to-man, -man, and it's six points for the Riders. And David Ridgway adds the convert, and it is now a 7-0 ball game. Saskatchewan leading Ottawa. We'll be back in just a moment. One of the rookie quarter cornerbacks picked on by Saskatchewan as Gerard Dussard is beaten by Lance very easily. Man-to-man -man coverage on that blitz, and Joe Pow Pow throws a strike. The first score of this ballgame. Took them four plays to get the major up there as David Ridgway kicks off and puts it deep into the end zone. Derek Zeno will have to give up a single point now, and the Saskatchewan Rough Riders will lead at 8-0. I just wonder if this young fellow knows that he gave up a single point. Probably not. He's one of the new receivers for the Ottawa Rough Riders, and he was not that deep in the end zone that he couldn't have gotten it out. Joe Moss may be a little upset. Derek Zeno out of Central Oklahoma State had a tryout in the NFL last year with Washington. He's 23 years of age, 5'9", 175, and he stays out there offensively now and goes in motion to the right. First down, Ottawa from the 35. They trail by eight. This is Zeno taking that little swing pass from J.C. Watts, and he is cut down by Eddie Ray Walker after a gain of about three yards, moving the ball out to the 38-yard line. Well, they're really stacking the deck on the right side there. They had four receivers on the right side of the field. Here's your preseason record for Zeno. Both inside receivers for Ottawa are brand new to the CFL. Except the Tony uh, Gary Doolin is now down on one knee. 
Former well, Ottawa Rough Fighter will be attended to. Will come out for one play, replaced by Scott Reddle. Tony January, who is also an inside receiver for Ottawa, wearing number 30, was in the Montreal camp in 1983. As you see, Doolin now leaving the playing field. It is warm down there, this artificial surface. It would be at least 10 degrees warmer than the air temperature, which about an hour ago was 26 degrees. The forecasted high today was at least 30. Thank goodness it isn't Friday when it was 37 here. Well, big fella like Doolin would really have some problems in that case. He's 275 pounds, six foot four. Today, the breeze here at Taylor Field is welcome relief from the blazing sun. Second down, seven yards to go. J.C. Watts over the head of the intended receiver, Tony January. Coming across the middle, and Eddie Ray Walker right with him all the way, and that'll bring up third down, and Ken Clark will be in to punt for the second time here in the opening quarter. Very difficult with this run-and-shoot offense, Dale, when you've got three brand-new receivers, and the fourth one you only really worked with for one year. It takes a lot of coordination between the passer and receivers. Kenny Clark, of course, used to play here in Saskatchewan. I said, this is your kind of day, Kenny. Nice breeze out of the Northwest. He says, you watch. I won't get to punt once with the wind. <laughs> Here he is again, punting first quarter. He was tied for the lead in the Canadian Football League with 46.8 in 1984. He's a good punter. Stu Fraser is a pretty good return man, too. He brings it back across the 50-yard line to about the 52. Let's go to Al. Well, Dale, just an update on Gary Doolin, the big defensive end out of Ohio State, a key man, of course, uh, in the Saskatchewan plans. He was uh, shaken up a little bit. It's not too serious, but they are going to repair in the dressing room and retape a hamstring, and they expect Gary will be back in a couple of series. Thank right you. now. Okay, Saskatchewan offense on the field. They scored from the Ottawa 54 last time. Paw Paw hitting Elarms for the touchdown. Saskatchewan first down from Elarms 52. They lead it 8 nothing. Paw Paw. Elgard again down the middle. And the big guy is getting open, getting some space. And he's got another first down. He takes it to the Ottawa 36 yard line where Hirsch makes the tackle, a pickup of 22 yards. The Saskatchewan really does think the, the strength of their offense, the receivers, is in the inside. Elgard and Chris DeFrant, who is coming close to becoming the, the uh, all-time leading receiver of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. They have not gone to DeFrant nearly as often as his counterpart on the other side, Elgard. On first down, Pow Pow going deep for Chris DeFrance. See, done a corner pattern, and it went over his head. Papa had to throw that ball, I think, a little sooner than he wanted to because of the pressure. Al Washington, the middle linebacker, coming in there. Another veteran from Ohio State, a former teammate of Gary Doolin. Playing against each other. As you see the pass going down. Joe Papa looking for him very quickly, but not time enough to find him. Second down and 10. The ball at the Ottawa 36. Quickly, Pow Pow finds Elgard again over the shoulder, catching another first down. David Outley, the corner, making the stop on Elgard at the 23 yard line, and it's a pickup of 13 yards. Boy, good job by the offensive line of Saskatchewan as they fired out to keep everybody's hands down because Joe dropped only two or three yards to release that football. They're throwing over some pretty big people with Greg Marshall at 6 4 on one side and Williams the same on the other side. Good job by the offensive line of Saskatchewan. And, and Dada thought that that would be a key to this football game, how well they could protect Joe. Pop -pop, a little play action fake. Pumps once, will take off with it. This he doesn't do very often and really doesn't like to run with the football, but Joe's a competitor and he picks up five or six yards. Towns was there to put the stop on him. He's now inside the Ottawa 20 to the 18 yard line. As you can see by those numbers, He's not exactly a Matt Bennigan when it comes to running with the football. <laughs> Very few people in the Canadian Football League or any other league are Matt Bennigan when it takes, comes to taking off of the football as a quarterback. Second down. Six, six again. Oh, wide open. David Conrad plows his way inside the five-yard line. 
16 more yards. Great drive by the Riders. Yeah, once again, Joe Popov picks up that blitz. Washington, number 17, the middle linebacker, coming immediately. They pick him up right at the line of scrimmage, and Joe knows that center is wide open. Look at him. Bang, he's hitting it right away. A la Ronnie Lancaster. You bet. Chris Sigler, the safety, is the man who put the stop on him, but he was playing well downfield, and Conrad had more than enough for the first down as soon as he caught the ball, and he managed to pull his way inside the five and Homer Jordan comes into quarterback now as the Rough Riders have their short yardage team in there the quick pitch to Craig Ellis getting outside turns the corner touchdown got some good blocks and a good job of running the ball by Craig Ellis Saskatchewan increases its lead here with less than four minutes remaining first quarter Well, they've had a lot of enthusiasm from fans here for years and years, Dale, and it's kind of like show me year for, <laughs> for Saskatchewan Rough Rider fans. And in the first quarter of their first football game, they are showing them right now. And David Ridgeway out of the hold by Stu Fraser converts the touchdown by Craig Ellis. And the Saskatchewan Rough Riders have opened up a 15 to nothing lead over the Ottawa Rough Riders. We'll be back in just a moment. The guy that does it all for the Western Riders, Craig Ellis, puts it in for the second time for Saskatchewan. The leading receiver in the entire Canadian Football League last year, and he shows that he can run with that football as well. Good job. Caught 91 passes last year, and he also set a couple of records for kickoff returns. 42 in number and over 1,000 yards in return. Now Ridgeway kicks off, puts it in the end zone once more. Zeno will bring it out this time. And he was slowed up. The blocking just didn't develop for him, and that allowed the coverage team, led by Rick Moore, to get downfield and make the tackle against Zeno at about the 12-and-a-half yard line, an 18-yard return. Dale, I don't know about the strategy there. You can see the flag and the wind that Ottawa is working against, but if you're 15 to nothing behind, what difference does 16 make? Exactly. Well, don't give Plus, up the first one, but <laughs> once you've done that, you can give up the second one with really no problem. And plus be out at your 35-yard line at first sure. and 10 instead of at your 12. 331 remains in this first quarter. count by J.C. Watts looking to the short side of the field throws incomplete trying to hit Mike Williams again and he's gone to Williams three or four times in this first quarter and he is not connected yet you know Dale uh, Ottawa might really be having bad luck here the wind is actually abating it was blowing awfully hard at the start of the game but it's going down and by the time they make the change who knows it could be still and right now Saskatchewan really making hay while the wind blows and our old uh, partner from the booth of last year seems to have adjusted pretty well to coaching again. Go ahead. I think they make wheat here, I'll not hay. <laughs> <laughs> Second down and 10. In trouble, J.C. Watts is wrapped up by Rick Moore and he has some help. Scott Reddle, who's still in there replacing Gary Doolin. Once again, Freddie Fleming, our ISO director, has the right guy ISO. Rick Moore, number 76. Does a super job of putting that pressure on. We're not going to block him very often with a back. That was Jim Reed, one of the better blockers in the Canadian Football League, but outmatched on that play. And once again, Ottawa have to kick against a stiff breeze. From the end zone, Ken Clark get this punt away. And over end kick, it's short. Stu Fraser on the move, 31-yard line, and again, Saskatchewan will have great field position, a 29-yard punt, and Fraser brings it back eight yards. We have 2.35 remaining in the opening quarter, and J.C. Watts and the run-and-shoot offense not clicking so far in the opening quarter, but Steve Barato will tell you the same thing in Calgary. It takes a while to get that offense going. You know, it doesn't look like uh, the Ottawa Rough Riders have the timing on that offense yet. Uh, that's not really that surprising working with so many new people. Well, this now gives Saskatchewan another opportunity to add to the lead. They're already out in front 15 nothing. They scored two touchdowns here in the opening quarter. Pow Pow dumps it off. This is Conrad again. 
And Al Washington is there to meet him this time. He gets inside the 25-yard line to about the 23. It'll be a pickup of seven yards. What a great job Conrad did, too. Did you see him? He, he went over there and he stood up Jack Williams, the right defensive end. And as soon as Williams got rid of him, thinking that he was getting away from a block, he became the number one receiver. Well, when they drafted David Conrad, the first thing they said is because he's a clone of Ray Elgard, and you really get that impression once he gets his hands on the football. They look very similar in their running styles. They're almost the same size. And he could play several different spots as well, eh? Homer Jordan comes back into the ball game. Short yardage again. The quick pitch to Greg Ellis. Penalty marker is down. Ellis goes down inside the 20-yard line, and he does have first down yardage. Ricky Barton... Ottawa certainly felt that he had spotted a penalty against Saskatchewan. You see what it is. Holding. They'll bring it back. Instead of being a first down, Saskatchewan Rough Riders will be looking at second and 13, and they'll move the ball back out to the 33-yard line. And Joe Palpal will come back in offensively. Holding. Saskatchewan number 66. Second down repeat. Dale, I've just checked with the Saskatchewan dressing room with Gary Doolin not appearing, and apparently he was hit in the head as you're watching a replay of that last uh, play that involved the penalty. Gary was hit in the head, and that was what the shakeup was. He's experiencing some dizzy spell, so now they say he probably won't play in the first half. He's gone to the locker room now as well. Pow pow for Craig Ellis. Did he catch it? They're going to give it to him. I thought he oh. lost control of the ball <laughs> and hit the ground. I thought he double dribbles. <laughs> and we have a penalty flag. I think Pow Pow may have been hit after the whistle. Once no, again, Washington was coming in there on a blitz. And once again, Freddie Fleming, our ISO director, can show you it with just the two folks in action. 20 yard gain. Now watch, does he control it? I don't know if he ever had control of that football. Either way, they were going to get a first down out of it because of the penalty, but it's going to be tacked on to the yardage here on this, what is called a catch by Craig Ellis. Good shot, Freddie. So that'll put the ball at the 12-yard line with 108 remaining in the first quarter. Here's the penalty call. Major foul rough in the passer. Ottawa 17. Unnecessary roughness, Saskatchewan 61 after the play is over. First down. Okay. Well, that's who it was, middle linebacker Al Washington coming in there hitting Joe Pow Pow, but Willie Thomas was also called for an infraction. Nevertheless, the Riders from the West will have a first down at the 12-yard line. There's 108 remaining in this first quarter, and Saskatchewan leads 15-0. Just had a quick look at the number of first downs by each team so far. And well, now they're bringing it back out the to the score. 22. But it still will be a first down. Hmm. Interesting placement of the ball. I'm not sure <laughs> not what's sure going on there. That. He marched it back nine yards in any event, not ten. It's at the 21-yard line. First and ten, Saskatchewan. Pow Pow for Elgard threw that one behind him. I'm going to bring up second down. Elgard's been a busy man here in the first quarter. He's made four catches for 68 yards. Stu Fraser will come in from the bench now and bring a play in with him. And Mike Collimore will come out. Fraser will line up as a wide receiver. Second down, 10 yards to go Saskatchewan from the Ottawa 21. And Pow Pow goes to the shotgun formation for the first time this afternoon. Steps up, throws deep down the middle, and Chris DeFrance is there to make the catch inside the five yard line. Once again, Dale, those inside receivers using their big size the France 6'1, 205, but he's a big 205. Goes up and shields himself from the defender. Chris needs only 49 more receptions to be the all time leading receiver from Saskatchewan to pass none other than Huey Campbell. That was a 17 yard gain, his first catch of the afternoon. This will be the last play of the opening quarter. 
little bit of a mix up there in the motion. Craig Ellis takes the handoff and gets near the one yard line. And the Ottawa defenders hold him out of the end zone and that'll do it. The first quarter comes to an end and Saskatchewan threatening to increase their lead when we come back after the first 15 minutes of play. It's Saskatchewan 15 and Ottawa nothing. We'll return with the second quarter in a moment. Saskatchewan Rough Riders second down from the one yard line. Ellis over the top, touchdown. The third touchdown of the ball game for the Riders and the second by Craig Ellis. And they now lead 21 0. Some drenched crowd here at Taylor Field enjoying this immensely. A lot of concern about Saskatchewan's offense, but they've had almost 200 yards already. Passing. Well, Saskatchewan beat this ball club 46-24 and 31-15 last year. They're on their way to another big offensive display against the Eastern Riders. Ridgeway converts Craig Ellis's one-yard touchdown plunge, and it is now a 22-0 ball game in favor of Saskatchewan. Ooh, what an offensive showing here by the Western Riders. Joe Pow Pow. 10 out of 13 for 198 yards in the first quarter. Dale, I really like the new Saskatchewan uniform. I think it's much dressier than it used to be. It seems everywhere Jack go to go as you get a change in uniform to some degree, but I really like Saskatchewan's. We're taking a look right now, Al, at the Chevrolet first quarter stats and look at the net yardage, 213 to five and 22 to nothing to score. That's the Chevy way to go as far as Saskatchewan's concerned. Ottawa Rough Riders are sporting new pants here this afternoon, and it's an awfully warm day to be out there in black. From the 45, Dave Ridgeway. It hangs up there, taken by Jared Zeno. He breaks free and gets to the 40-yard line, and Fran McDermott cuts him down about the 42, a 25-yard return. So now Ottawa will finally have some field position to work with. They certainly didn't have it in the first quarter. And the breeze at their back. They move the ball to the 41-yard line. First and 10 for J.C. Watson Company. Good wedge by Ottawa. Watts, of course. Veteran quarterback, four-year pro out of Oklahoma. Well, they got five receivers on the right side. And one and of them wide Zeno open. Zeno works his way wide open for a big gain. Got oh. some speed tripped up by Billy Jackson at the Saskatchewan 43-yard line. 26-yard gain for the Ottawa Rough Riders. You know, if he gets by Billy Jackson here, Dale, this might be a score. It looked to me like he had a blocker that could help him on the top side there. Jackson just gets a piece of his right leg. Zeno's got some speed. First and 10, Ottawa now at the Saskatchewan 43. Penalty marker is down. Watts completes the pass to Wayman Ulrich. His first catch of the afternoon. He's looking for some blocking help. Cuts it back. He's going to take gonna it in. in there. But there is a penalty marker and down against the Rough Riders. Illegal motion against Ottawa. JC three-yard score wiped out. JC really upset. As is Aldrich, of course, who made a great run after he caught that football. That was a marvelous run, not unlike Darnell Clash the other night, Frank. Procedure. Ottawa number 68. First down repeat. The rookie offensive guard, Nick Benjamin. I might speak to him after this series. <laughs> great pass, great, great run with the football by the only veteran receiver the Ottawa Rough Riders have. And it's all for naught as Ottawa scrimmage the ball at the, at the Ryder 53-yard line. He's down from the 48, actually, and J.C. Watts getting good protection now threw it past the intended receiver, Tony January. Couldn't find anybody open downfield. It'll be second and 10. Watts holds the Ottawa club record for the most attempts and completions in one game. Back in 1981, 29 of 51. Right 
now they've had one big offensive play, but it was wiped out by a penalty. Penalty marker is down. Saskatchewan may have been offside as Rick Moore gets to J.C. Watts from behind. Watts getting back to the line of scrimmage. I think that's what was offside, though. It looked to me like the right defensive side, and Rick Moore, I believe, was a guilty party. So that'll Take a look make at it. it. Watch the top of your screen. No question, the infraction against Saskatchewan. Offside. Saskatchewan 63, second down repeated. Well, they're calling it Rick Colts. Second down, 10 yards to go. The ball at the Saskatchewan 43-yard line. Watch with the deeper drop and finds the short man open at the 40-yard line. Tony January slipped a couple of tackles, then stepped out of bounds at the 38. And he'll be five yards short of the first down. Boy, if JC had had the opportunity to look to the other side, Tim McCray was wide open. You got to put that ball away, though. That is not the way to carry the football. It was a good effort. He's going to fumble it sooner or later like that. So it's third down and five from the 38. And Dean Dorsey is in. And he'll be trying a 45-yard field goal. Best percentage in the entire Canadian Football League in 84. 83.9% Dorsey was successful with field goals. And his longest one was 51 yards, so this is certainly well within his range. He has, has the wind at his back. It is wide to the right. Fran McDermott in the end zone will give up a single point eventually. As he makes Nick Benjamin chase him out of the end zone. So it's now a 22 to 1 in favor of Saskatchewan. 11.59 remaining second quarter. We'll be back right after this. The Calgary Stampeders had the opening weekend off, but the Stamps will get 1985 underway at the Big O in Montreal this coming Wednesday night. Steve Barato and company against uh, the Concord, who looked so good in their opener against Winnipeg, and that'll be seen regionally in Calgary only, starting at 5.30. Good matchup with a great defense of the Calgary Stampeders and Turner Gill and an explosive offense of the Concord. First down, Saskatchewan. Joe Popoff oh, threw it behind, ball. Ellis. Whoa, get on that ball. Get on that football. The referee was right there calling an incomplete pass, but, boy, that was thrown behind him. I'd like to see that again. That's a couple for Ellis today that he's been kind of fortunate on. Well, we can't, I don't think we can tell from that picture, but it, well, I think maybe it was in front of him. Joe was backing up as he's throwing the ball. See if we can see it from here. Joe threw it at the 31. Oh, it was behind. It was behind him. That's a fumble. So it's second down and 10. Saskatchewan at the 37 and a half yard line. Pow, pow. Michael Elarms, and that misfires, and it'll be third down. So Saskatchewan offense. Saskatchewan very, very lucky on that series. The Ottawa players were reacting to it, went after the loose ball, but the official had already called it an incomplete pass. How Pow leaves the field, and we'll take a look at young Terry Leschuk with his first punt in a regular season game for Saskatchewan. A junior out of Calgary. Beat out Paul Hickey for the punting job. It's a good kick. Low line drive type of kick taken by Zeno. Looking for the sidelines and he is hauled down by Billy Jackson. Good job by Jackson. And Ottawa will take over at their own 36. And it's a 22 to one ball game in favor of Saskatchewan. We'll be right back. Punter Leschuk, his first punt in the Canadian Football League, and he learned to keep his head up, I think. Great camera work once again by our crew from CFCN. Nice going, guys. First down, Ottawa Rough Riders. The ball at their own 36-yard line. Just under 11 minutes to play in the opening half. 
Ottawa struggling, trying to get something going here offensively. Penalty marker comes down as J.C. Watts outraced the lineman, then completes a pass to Tony January as he made the catch just in front of Glenn Suter and gets to the Saskatchewan 52 or 53-yard line, which would be a big gain and first down yardage, but they're going to bring it back, holding against Ottawa. I think they're going to call holding on Jim Reed, the fullback, so now Ottawa's got some things going offensively here in the second quarter, Frank, but penalties are killing them. Holding, Ottawa 32. Yeah. First down repeat. Jim Reed coming from his fullback spot. You'll see him come over to the right side, and it's Rick Moore, I'm sure, that he held as Moore was trying to keep the pressure, keep the containment to the inside. Watch Reed grab him. He's grabbed him with his right hand, as you can see right there. It was actually Capers 78 that he grabbed. So penalty wiping out that sizable gain. An earlier penalty wiped out a touchdown by Wayman Allred. First down over again, 20 yards to go. Watts in trouble, dumps it off to Tim McRae. He gets his hands on the football for the first time this afternoon and has a good run out to the 50-yard line. And he has enough for a first down. A pickup of 24 yards, Terry Irvin making the tackle. Well, it's really strange, too, Dale, that we're 20 minutes into this football game before Tim McRae has his hands on it once. He came in here and beat out Skip Walker, a great football player, and we saw him last year, just really an exciting guy when he gets his hands on the ball. He played 10 games last year and had 701 yards rushing. He can move with the football, and he showed it that time as he gives the Ottawa Rough Riders a first down at their own 49. Pumps once going deep for Mike Williams. Terry Irvin has got it. His second interception of the afternoon. Terry Irvin, I think, shook himself up making that interception, but the Saskatchewan Rough Fighters will have the ball when we come back. It's a 22 to 1 score in favor of the Western Riders. We'll return in a moment. What a great catch by the veteran Terry Irving for his second interception in this football game. He was slightly shaken up, but he's now up and under his own steam back to his bench. Mike Williams, the intended receiver, the ball overthrown just slightly with that following win, and Saskatchewan takes over at their own 11-yard line. 9.27 remains in this first half now. Terry Irving himself up. Now the Rough Rider offense. Saskatchewan goes to work, and this is Robert Reed, the second-year Canadian Robert running back, tackled by Tom Towns. Dale Terry Irvin just knocked the wind out of himself, and he says he'll be ready to go uh, when the defense goes back on the field. Well, I didn't think you'd get a chance to talk to him. <laughs> Terry, of course, quite cooperative with the media. Yeah, you'd have to say that. <laughs> I think you could probably get him for an interview if you wanted out. Second down and three, little play action, and Pow Pow threw this one behind the intended receiver, Craig Ellis, covered by Rick Sovieta. So the offense unable to get anything going after the interception by Irvin, and the punting unit will come back onto the field. Pow Pow leading Saskatchewan to a 22 to nothing lead. It's now 22 to one. Saskatchewan doing most of the damage in that first quarter, and getting two of their three touchdowns in the first and got their third on the opening play of the second quarter. As you can see, a sun-drenched Taylor Field. Penalty marker is down. Terry Lestek gets another beauty into that breeze, and this is Mike Williams on the return. Turning the corner on the left side, and David Conrad is there to haul him down. Good open field tackle at the Saskatchewan 49-yard line, but we do have a flag at the line of scrimmage. And we'll see if it goes against Ottawa, and looks like it will. It'll be a first down Saskatchewan. They were second down, or third down and three, and a 44-yard punt that time by Leschuk. So the rookie is off to a good start. His punts both into the wind, both over 40 yards. Offside, Ottawa 36, first down. Gerald Broussard, the rookie corner. Let's go to Al. 
You know, Dale, everywhere we go so far this year, a lot of players complaining about the new football. There's a new JV5 this year, and they're arguing, you're looking at it now, that's uh, last year's ball on the left, the new one on the right. They say from the stripe on the ball to the pointed end is fatter than last year. Tougher for the quarterbacks, the centers, and the receivers to handle, and they, they feel it's a detriment to the league. First down, Pow Pow, who called that new ball a beach ball, completes this one to Krista France, and he just gets back to the line of scrimmage before he's brought down. Bill, you know, the other criticism of the football has been by the punters saying because it is a, a fatter type of ball that they can't kick it as well, particularly against the wind. But Terry Leschuk is not finding that so far this afternoon. Having a much better time punting into the wind than Ken Clark did in the first quarter. You're right, though, Frank. All the, all the punters are saying it's tougher to get a tight spiral on on a windy day. So it's second down and 10, Saskatchewan, from their own 23. How about throws it's knocked down penalty marker Stu Fraser the intended receiver Steve Hirsch the defender and he bumped him from behind and it'll be an interference call Saskatchewan will get a first down well a rookie from the University of Illinois said well what can I do I <laughs> can't do he thought he made a good defensive play let's take a look defensive pass interference Ottawa number nine first down very close he tried to get that hand in front knock him down not only has Saskatchewan had things going their way in the offensive totals and on the scoreboard, they've had a lot of calls go their way. Well, Ottawa really hurt themselves with penalties, including taking six points off the board. First down, Saskatchewan out at the 29 now. Chris de France, all by himself, tried to go between two men and got out to the 35 for a gain of six yards, making the tackle Rick Sovieta. 11 new starters in this Ottawa lineup for today's game. As you look at Pow Pow, who's enjoying a very fine first half for Saskatchewan. Ottawa with five new starters on defense and six on offense. Craig Ellis off tackle. And he's very Craig close Ellis. to first down yardage. He gets out near the 40 yard line is where he had to be. And it's Engelson making the tackle. And there's an injured Ottawa Rough Rider on the play. Some of these guys may be just played out. It is very warm down at field level. Engelson, number 78, shaken up. He made the tackle. Here's a very active middle linebacker, Al Washington, on the play. Getting a good part of the stop. Engelson leaves the playing field. And it's first down Saskatchewan near their 40. 6.15 remaining in the second quarter. J.C. Watts and Wayman Allridge. Discussing the offense. They want to shoot. They've had a couple of plays. Big plays. And both of them were called back because of penalty. Pow Pow staying on the ground with Craig Ellis. Looks past one man. Has a first down. He's out to the Saskatchewan 51 yard line. And moving up is the safety, Chris Sigler, to make the tackle, a 12-yard pickup. You know, we've been talking, uh, Dale, a couple of times about David Conrad, the versatile youngster for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. He gets a great block on this play. Number 37. If you stop it right here, no, go a little bit further. Stop it right there. You see him right in the middle of your screen there. Great block. Sealing down on the play. Pow Pow on first down, into the middle, Krista Franz goes up high in the air for it. Boy, he can make those kind of catches look so easy. Another first down, Saskatchewan. He's inside the Ottawa 45, a pickup of 16. Tom Towns made the tackle. Ron Engelson being attended to. He was shaken up two plays ago. Bill, I guess that's why DeFrance looks bigger than he is. He has that great leaping ability, and I think that's the first thing we noticed when he was a rookie four or five years ago, going up and getting that football. First of France holds the single game record for pass receiving yardage for Saskatchewan. 260 yards is set in 1983 against Edmonton. Craig Ellis, 40 yard line, a pickup of about three yards. A little hesitation on behalf of Craig. There really wasn't a hole there, and he had to pick his oh, way. Now we have a flag down. It'll be a down. penalty against Otley. Willie Thomas had gone down and tried to block the young defensive back of the Ottawa Rough Riders, and I think they're going to march it off against Saskatchewan, Frank. Oh. 
<laughs> well, there's two flags came down. Maybe they'll. I think it'll be Major offsetting. Major foul on there, say roughness number five. Sixty-one. Major foul on there, say for us. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Roger Aldag is saying we don't we don't have a five out here. <laughs> I think it was sixty-one green and five white. <laughs> They were slapping each other around after the play was over. <laughs> so, it's a three-yard gain anyway. It's I like uh, Larry, Larry Rohan's <laughs> response, though, the referee. <laughs> Doesn't matter. I got the flag. <laughs> Second down, seven. Pow, pow. Stu Fraser, first down and more. 28-yard line. They are not booing. They are cheering for Stu. 12-yard gain for the young... Canadians, Stu Fraser, Barton finally made the tackle on him. 27 years of age, a six-year pro out of the University of New Brunswick. Good throw by Pau Pau. Having one of his better days since he's become a rider. Pau Pau right now is 14 out of 20 for 233 yards compared to J.C. Watts. And that relates to the score, too. Robert Reed to the 25-yard line, and he has three on first down. This is by far the best drive by either ball club against the wind, and of course they're doing two things, moving into scoring position, but also keeping the ball away from the black, red, and white riders. This is the, this was the 10th play of this drive. Of course, they were helped immensely by an offside earlier, which gave them a first down. Deep in Saskatchewan territory. Now they've moved to the Ottawa 25. Second down and seven. Too much time. The 22nd clock can run out. They'll back him up to the 30-yard line. It'll be second down and 12 yards to go. Time count. Saskatchewan number six. Second down. First time today we've had that infraction. We have 327 remaining in the second quarter. Saskatchewan. Leading 22 to 1 on the move again. Knee arms to the left, Fraser to the right, the wide receivers. Everybody's blitz. Ball left, throwing to Michael Elarms, coming back to the ball. He stepped out of bounds, shy of the first down. Well, his momentum as he came back to the football. Did put him out of bounds at about the 19-yard line. It'll be third and one. I believe Saskatchewan will gamble on the play. Homer Jordan coming in along with the short yardage offense. There's 321 remaining now, and Saskatchewan has a 22 to 1 lead, and would really like to retain possession of this ball a little longer. Well, the crowd was all set to get on Chaco if he was setting the field goal unit. <laughs> That's the truth. So it's third down, less than a yard to go. Homer Jordan in. Thunder, Ottawa's got the ball. And making the recovery, Ricky Barden, number 25. And it, the score remains. Saskatchewan 22 and Ottawa 1. We'll be back in just a moment. Well, I guess Homer Jordan couldn't be called a cold quarterback coming in on a hot day like this, but... He's taking that snap for one of the few times in the ball game, and obviously he did not get control of the football. So Saskatchewan kills her own drive right at the 22-yard line of Ottawa. And following today's game, don't forget the Carlin O'Keefe Game Stars, and those Game Stars will be picked by fans from across the country for the first time in 1985. down Ottawa near the 22 JC Watts completes it to Derek Zeno he is spilled by Fran McDermott at the 30 yard line a pickup of close to nine yards on the play actually it'll be second down a long two to go short two to go that Zeno looks like he about, he's about a half a step away from breaking one every time he gets a hold of it Give to McRae, and he's got lots for the first down across the 35, out to about the 37 yard line. First and 10 now for the Ottawa Rough Riders, and that is the first yardage for this afternoon that Ottawa's picked up rushing the football. A gain of seven by Tim McRae. Bernard Quarles, the backup quarterback for Ottawa, former Calgary Stampeder. The 
first down for J.C. Watts. Throwing for Wayman. All Reggie's open, and he is finally brought down at the 20-yard line as he beat Kenny Hinton. Allridge, 53-yard gain. He had a touchdown wiped out earlier because of a penalty. Bill, that must just about double the total offensive production of the Ottawa Rump Riders in this ball game. 53 yards and a great throw from J.C. Watts. They now have 124 yards passing. Well, that's almost half. <laughs> 53 in one play. And they put themselves in scoring position with just under two minutes remaining now. Tony January and Eddie Walker almost had an interception, number two. And Eddie Ray Walker would have been gone. Tony January wasn't expecting the pass. He, as soon as he turned, the ball went by him. Eddie Ray Walker out of southern Mississippi. Almost coming up with the interception. The Riders do have two. The Western Riders have two interceptions this afternoon, both of them by Terry Irvin. Right now, Ottawa, second and 10 from the Saskatchewan 20. But Upper right, go back to the weak side and get a receiver open. Wayman Allridge again. Kenny Hinton makes the tackle at the 12 yard line. It's first down, or make that the 8 yard line. It'll be first and goal, a pickup of 14 yards. Well, now they spot it at the 6. Well, it's just nice to see Ottawa putting a drive together finally and get, try to get back in this ball game before halftime. It's 22-1. Favor of Saskatchewan. First and goal. Watts looking for January deep in the end zone and he overthrew him. He was open. Took him a little while to make the move and get past Fran McDermott, but he eventually did, and Watts had the time to wait for him, and he laid it up there a little too far. I think that's an occasion, Dill, when the wind hurt J.C. Watts. The ball stayed up in the air just a little bit too long. Blew right past the receiver. Second and goal from the six. 135 remaining in the first half. Penalty marker is down into the end zone. Touchdown, Wayman Allridge, working against Kenny Hinton once more. But let's wait and see what the penalty flag is all about. It is against Saskatchewan offside. The touchdown stands. Well, that was a watch to Allridge drive for sure. Watch the ISO shot one more time. Kenny Hinton backing off just enough for Aldridge to turn that out very quickly just over the goal line. Good throw by J.C. J.C. Watts, first touchdown pass of 1985. And Dean Dorsey now in to convert the touchdown out of the hold by Kenny Clark. It is now a 22-8 ball game with one and a half minutes remaining in the second quarter. Good drive by Ottawa. They had hurt themselves earlier but with penalties, but in that one, he managed to take it the length of the field, and a big play in the drive was a 53-yarder by Allrich. 89 yards in all in seven plays. Allrich getting the touchdown. It is now a 22-8 ball game with one and a half minutes remaining in the second quarter. Good drive by Ottawa. They had hurt themselves earlier but with penalties, but in that one, he managed to take it the length of the field, and a big play in the drive was a 53-yarder by Allrich. 89 yards in all in seven plays. Allrich getting the touchdown. will be roasted at their third annual dinner at the Civic Center on July 17th. And the Ottawa Rough Riders will be opening at home on the 18th against the Eskimos. Getting back to the dinner, the evening and being co-sponsored by the alumni associations of the Ottawa Football Club and the Boys and Girls Club. Master of Ceremonies, Terry Kilty. Head table guests include Ron Stewart, Joe Poirier, Eddie McCabe, Johnny Esau, Doug Mitchell, Don Holtby. Tickets available through the Ottawa Football Club and the Boys and Girls Club. <laughs> Sounds like we're the only ones that won't be there, Dale. <laughs> Bob Lees and John Pickett doing a great job on stats once again for us today. And they tell us that 
Aldridge had 73 out of that 89 yards on the drive for Ottawa. Pretty dominant factor for the Eastern Riders. 131 remains now. And because of the wind here at Taylor Field, Zeno will hold the ball for Dean Dorsey on this kickoff, and he'll put it deep. Michael Elarms. He touched it. He'll have to bring it out or give up a single point. Now he'll give up the single, and it's a 22 to 9 ball game. So definitely the wind aids the kicking game whenever you have it at your back. 75 yard single that time for the Ottawa Rough Riders. Dean Dorsey of the University of Toronto. Formerly in Toronto and Hamilton. And had tryouts south of the board as well. Bernard Quarles, Coach Joe Moss. First down Saskatchewan, 35-yard line. The give is to Robert Reed. Out across the 40 to the 41 for a gain of six yards. Sovieta again making the tackle for the Ottawa Rough Riders. Second down and four coming up. Stu Fraser will come back in offensively and replace Mike Collimore. Uh, Powell with over 230 yards passing here in the first half. Staying on the ground now, Robert Reed in the handoff, and he gained maybe one more yard, and that's it. Greg Marshall in on the tackle along with Michelle Bourgeau, and that'll bring on the punting unit. Saskatchewan gets very conservative with that possession. Greg Marshall, a leader of that defense, 66 at the top of your screen. Watch the job he does. Just stands at offensive lineman Neil Coulter, 65, right up and stacks the play. That's why he was defensive player of the year in the Canadian Football League in 1983. So Terry Leschuk is in to punt once more. He's done a good job against the wind here in the second quarter. Another low line drive spiral from the 35 yard line. Mike Williams on the return and he is right down from behind out at the 48 yard line. A 33 yard punt return of 14. Ken Moore made the tackle. Let's go to Al. Well, Dale, I hope everybody will stay with us during our halftime intermission. We're going to have the CFL this week. Dan Matheson will have Chris Ziegler of Ottawa a feature on him. Uh, Frank and Dale, of course, will provide the highlights. And right at the top of the half, I'll be interviewing one of the Ottawa Rough Riders to uh, talk about that first half of action. So stay with us in the intermission. Well, the Ottawa Rough Riders would love to go back into the Saskatchewan end zone now as they start from their own 48-yard line. J.C. Watts down the middle, picked up by the veteran James Reed. And he brings it back to the Ottawa 54-yard line, the third interception against J.C. this afternoon. The first two by Terry Irvin, and this one by James Reed, the former Winnipeg Blue Bomber, who left the CFL to spend a couple of years south of the border, and Saskatchewan Rough Riders have brought him back, and he's starting. Bill, I was talking to uh, Jocko before the ball game, and we talked quite a long time about James Reed, and... Jocko said they are so pleased to have him on this ball club, not only because of his great ability, size, instinct, and talent, but a great leader of this defensive football team. Pow Pow now goes quickly to Mike Collimore, and he gets out of bounds, or did he? Maybe he didn't get out of bounds. No, but he got a first down at the Ottawa 42-yard line, ultimately making the tackle. We have 15 seconds remaining in the first half. And as a pickup of 12 yards, Saskatchewan trying to utilize the clock here now as Collimore makes his first catch of the day. They'd love to at least get a field goal here before the first half ends. Get the ball spotted at the Ottawa 42. yard line good defense that time by the Ottawa Rough Riders and that was Engelson I believe who got through there sacked was, Joe Pow Pow it was Ron Engelson you should see the effort that he came up with there take a look at Engelson down in that left-handed stance as he's lining up against Roger Aldag the veteran offensive guard number 44 and it's basically just a great effort 
Makes a move to the inside, gets rid of Aldeg very quickly. Skullrud tries to pick him up, but not in time. So Chris Sigler, as Al mentioned a moment ago, will be featured on our halftime intermission. Also a baseball player in Indiana. Good all-around athlete, and he won that safety spot. You'll find out more about him during our halftime break. And that's a sack by Engelson has pushed the Saskatchewan Rough Riders out of field goal range here as Ridgeway would have to kick into the breeze, and we have nine seconds left in the half. They'll be thrown about a 12, 15-yard break out and see if they can do it in nine seconds. Papa throwing quickly for Collymore, and he gets out of bounds at the 35-yard line, and they'll get a chance now. Uh-oh, penalty on Ottawa as well. I think oh. they're going to be called for roughing Pow Pow, which would add a penalty to that gain. 13-yarder to Collymore. Well, no, it's going to be against Saskatchewan. Ooh. So that'll push them back into the that'll home side the of midfield. That'll be the end of any scoring attempt. Holding. Saskatchewan number 33. Second down repeat. Second down over again. It doesn't matter though. It's got the last play of the first half coming up here. Craig Ellis, the guilty party there. Ron Eagleson once again coming in there with that great effort. Craig Ellis trying to keep him off his quarterback by holding him. The last play of the half, and Pow Pow just gives it to Craig Ellis, and he takes it back to the Ottawa 50-yard line, and the gun sounds to end the first half of play here at Taylor Field, and the Saskatchewan Rough Riders get a ovation from this crowd, and it's a 22-9 score in favor of Saskatchewan. Here's Al. Well, okay, Dale, I've got a guy who had a heck of a first half. Uh, I guess about the only veteran receiver left with Ottawa now, William and Ulrich. Wayman, a frustrating first half for you, and yet you personally had a couple of touchdowns, but that one was called back after a dazzling run. Must have been a disappointment. Yes, it was. Uh, you know, it was kind of motion in the line, and I just wanted more things happen, and we just have to get it back in the second half. That's all. You made another touchdown on the next drive, and you've caught a lot of footballs. I'm, I want to ask you about the run and shoot. Did it take a lot of uh, mental preparation for you to make a change in the offensive philosophy? Well, not really on the outside. It's mostly mental preparation in the inside. Them guys mostly have the uh, hardest part of the uh, offense, trying to learn the system and everything. But, you know, on the outside, it's, it's kind of difficult trying to learn to run and shoot, but we're just trying to get it down and get everything right. Wayman, as it turned out, that first half, penalties plagued your football team. Yes, it did. Uh, like I say, it's just one of the most unfortunate things, and we just got to get it together the second half. Are you pretty optimistic about the 1985 edition of Ottawa Rough Riders? Yes, I am. Uh, it's a new program, and uh, Joe Moss is, you know, getting us together and stuff, and discipline for us, and, you know, had us working hard in the uh, training camp. So, uh, like I say, it's, it's a long half, and we just have to come back. A guy like you who has to do a lot of running during a football game, does it bother you to play in, in a hot day like this? No, not really. Like I said, uh, it was hot in Ottawa, and we practiced like two and three hours a day. So, you know, we prepared ourselves all week for it. So, so Mars told it was going to be a hot day this Sunday, so we pretty much well uh, ready for it. It seems to me the run and shoot is really starting to catch on. As the half wore on, you guys got sharper and sharper. Yes, uh, like I say, it's, it's kind of difficult, but we just have to get everything down. Wayman, thanks for dropping by. Best of luck in the second half. All right, thank you. Wayman Allridge, who had a heck of a first half, I'll tell you. He hopes Ottawa can fight their way back. Okay, it's a 22-9 ball game. Saskatchewan leading. The CFL on CTV continues in just a moment. The 1985 regular season really got off to a big bang this weekend with eight of the CFL's nine teams seeing action. Besides today's encounter, we had games in Montreal, in Edmonton, and in Hamilton. The defending champion Winnipeg Blue Bombers are in Montreal, tied at 17 when Harry Skipper blocks the punt. Mark Hopkins recovers for the go-ahead touchdown. Dwayne Wilson adds another just to be sure, 34-18. A turnover also proves critical as Toronto visits Edmonton. Codrich Holloway has the ball popped loose. John Daly puts the Eskimos ahead. Hank Elisic misses a 35-yard attempt for the tie. 25-23 the final. In Hamilton last night, the BC Lions lose their starting quarterback, Roy DeWalt, but Tim Cowan steps right in. 24-yard touchdown toss to John Pankratz. 
John Henry White goes one yard to put the Lions ahead to stay 14-7. The Tiger Cats offense has all kinds of trouble. They only manage 94 yards in total offense and a painful turnover here. The Lions recover and Cowan goes right back to work looking to the end zone. He fires five yards to Ron Robinson, 21-7. And to cap a four touchdown second quarter, Cowan goes to the air once again to Jim Sandusky. He finds him wide open, but Sandusky does not score. In fact, he fumbles the ball, but no matter, teammate Key Van Jenkins recovers. It's a BC romp. Coming up, Calgary at Montreal on Wednesday. On Thursday, Hamilton at Winnipeg. The Friday night CTV game sees Saskatchewan at Toronto. And on Saturday, it is Edmonton at BC. This is the CFL on CTV. The Ottawa Rough Riders are a brand new football team in 1985. The long running reign of head coach George Brancato was over. The Riders brought in Joe Moss from the Argonaut staff to take over in the nation's capital. He's made the Riders work longer and harder in training camp and given them a new look on the field. Quarterback J.C. Watts is the main man in the CFL's latest run and shoot offense. And on defense, there have been many changes, especially in the secondary where holdover Ricky Barden was the only back the new coaching staff really liked. But timing and teamwork are critical in the secondary. Experience and playing time make the backs work as a unit, and that will only take time for the Riders. In preseason, they won just one of four games, giving up an average of 31 and a half points per game. But the new talent is being used right away, thrown in to give them that valuable experience and playing time. The coaches already think that they have some talent. A very aggressive and punishing hitter, 22-year-old Chris Siegler was the best defensive back at Indiana last year. And in this season, his first ever as a professional football player, Siegler is already a starter. He's stepping right into that rebuilt secondary of the Ottawa Rough Riders. I really wasn't sure about, you know, pro football even up until this past year coming out of college. I thought, you know, I had some prospects, and I thought I was going to get drafted coming out of Kai's, and we had a pretty dismal year at Indiana this past year. So um, things didn't work out the way that I'd planned, and the college coach, Coach Bill Mallory and Tom Dimitrov, our player personnel director, um, coached together back in the States. So we got together and started talking on the phone, and that's basically how I got up here to Canada and into Ottawa. Noted for his aggressive hitting, Sigler says that is something he has grown to enjoy. I think a lot of it, you know, comes from within and have, having good coaching coming up through the ranks, you know, helps teaching how to, to hit correctly. I mean, I think there's a right way and a wrong way to do anything. And proper technique, plus just it's got to come within. you got to want to go hit. And, you know, if you build that discipline and everything to yourself, you know, and then after a while it becomes fun. And, you know, you look forward to doing it every, you know, every game when you go out there. And the change for Chris, a defensive back carries a heavier load in the CFL. You know, it's a lot different, I guess, in the States where they, you know, they maybe run the ball five to ten times a game up here and throw it 50. Where in the States, you know, it's, it's 50, 60, something like that. But, you know, the motion and the width of the field has all been a new change, and I'm trying to get used to it. And, you know, it's, it's just going to take a little while. We're at halftime here at Taylor Field on a warm Sunday afternoon in Regina. And, of course, it is breezy as well. What else is new in southern Saskatchewan? And that has played a big part in this afternoon's ball game because the Saskatchewan Rough Riders got rolling with the wind in the first quarter, built up a 22 to nothing lead. Ottawa got the win in the second quarter without a penalty taking out one touchdown from them. This game would be a lot closer than the score is now. Well, it, it, the wind certainly didn't seem to affect Joe Popo throwing the football, Dale. I think that he had just about as good a first half as I've ever seen him have since he's become a Saskatchewan Rough Rider. He started right, right off throwing the football. Of course, they did have the wind, as Dale mentioned. And the Lions gets the first touchdown from him. Strictly man-to-man -man coverage. And from 54 yards out, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders go ahead 8 to nothing early on. David Conrad, the rookie Canadian for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, also had a big part to play in that first half. Here he takes a quick pass from Joe Pow Pow over the middle. Pow Pow spotting the opening and the wide open receiver and takes it inside the five. You saw him read that blitz and find that middle receiver, and he does that once again. This time it's Chris de France. And watch how Chris de France goes up and shields his, the ball with his body. He moves the ball down to the four yard line. And Craig Ellis takes it in on the very next play, which is the first play of the second quarter. At this point in time, Saskatchewan was ahead 22 to nothing. 
And finally, late in the fourth quarter, in the latter part of the second quarter, Ottawa got going. Here is J.C. Watts, and he is looking for Wayman Allridge, and he finds him for a big 53-yard gain. Wayman, you'll recall, had a touchdown wiped out in that first half because of a penalty, but this is a big gainer for Ottawa as they finally get things clicking with the run and shoot. And they, this combination works once again as they put it into the end zone. Allridge had 74 out of the 89 yards on that drive, three receptions, working primarily against Kenny Hinton. So they were trying to pick on Hinton just a little bit. They could see from the statistical story that that 89-yard drive was a big, big part of the total offense for the Ottawa Rough Riders. 309 yards for Saskatchewan, 149 for Ottawa. Let's go down to field level and Al McCann. Well, Frank, one bit of bad news for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. You'll recall early in the game, Gary Doolin, their big defensive end, uh, was injured and was shaken up. He was taken to the dressing room. We expected he would play, but now it looks like they may keep Gary back uh, due to a possible concussion, not for sure, but they're not taking any chances. It's doubtful now that Gary will play in the second half. Okay, Dale. Thank you very much, Al. The Ottawa Rough Riders kick off to get this second half underway, and the Rough Riders bring it back from... The end zone, Craig Ellis out to the 20-yard line where the Saskatchewan offense will go to work into this breeze here at Taylor Field for this third quarter. 22 to 9 is the score in favor of Joe Pow Pow and company. Craig Ellis, a couple of touchdowns for Saskatchewan and also the one we showed you, Michael Elarms taking that long pass from Pow Pow to open the scoring. Bernard Quarles loosening up over on the far sideline along with J.C. Watts, Quarles. Of course, the former Calgary Stampede acquired in the offseason in a trade. But right now, Saskatchewan's offense goes to work from the 20. Swinging out of the backfield, that pass behind Craig Ellis, and it is a loose that football, it. but it went out of bounds before Ottawa got to it, I think. No. Ottawa says they touched it last, but the ball did go out of bounds. And again, Saskatchewan very, very lax and careless on that type of play. And Dale, both occasions it's been Craig Ellis, and you'd think he'd know better. You should always go after that football if there's any question at all. And there wasn't any. Watch how far this ball is behind him. He's a good two yards behind him when uh, Pow Pow is throwing the football to him. Saskatchewan, once again, very, very fortunate that they did not give up the football. And it's just out of bounds before Outley got to touch it. So it's a big loss on the play. Saskatchewan now second down and big yardage to go. About 20, 21 yards from their own nine-yard line. And Ellis is tackled by Bourgeau, and the punting unit will come on quickly. So the Rough Riders are not sharp to start this third quarter. I mean, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders certainly aren't. Everybody in green just stopped and watched the ball roll, and about four or five white jersey Ottawa Rough Riders went after it, and they just couldn't quite get to it. Well, Ottawa has an excellent chance to come get back into this football game. It's 22-9, but they should have really good field position, but despite the fact that this youngster, Leschuk, has kicked the ball extremely well against the breeze. This one will hang up. He got a little more height on this one than I think he wanted. Sigler takes it on one hop at the 35-yard line. He's tripped up by Eddie Lowe. And the Ottawa Rough Riders will take over in Saskatchewan territory. First down at the 36-yard line. A punt of only 26 yards and a return of four. Let's go to Al once more. The wind is a gusting thing right now, Dale and Frank. It's not actually as uh, stiff as it was. And uh, there's the Grey Cup flag that went up at... Uh, during the halftime, they had Reggie Whitehouse, the old captain of the 66 team, back along with Coach Eagle Keys. Nice, nice touch to the halftime. J.C. Watts on first down. He finds Zeno and grabbing him by one foot is Fran McDermott to hold the gain to about four yards, maybe five, depending on where they spot it, close to the 30-yard line. And Zeno picks up five yards. The second down and five from the Saskatchewan 30. And if Ottawa can take advantage of uh, the field position that they enjoy right at the moment, cut into that Saskatchewan lead pretty good here in the third quarter, and if it wouldn't have been for the penalty wiping out a touchdown in the first half, you could have a chance of being tied, but J.C. Watts won't get this one away. Three or four members of the Saskatchewan defense, led by Rick Goltz, got to him. Rick Moore was also there. And it'll be a loss of a couple back to the Saskatchewan 32. It'll be third down and seven yards Once to go. Once again, they're looking for Aldridge, but this time Terry Irvin is covering him and does an excellent job giving the 
up front riders time to get the J.C. Watt. Ken Clark now will hold the football for Dorsey as they will attempt to pull within 10 points of Saskatchewan. 39 yard attempt by Dean Dorsey. The kick is down and up and it is good. And so the Ottawa Rough Riders have cut into the lead now. It's 22 to 12 in favor of Saskatchewan here in the third quarter and we'll be right back. Well, after Jack Goda's Saskatchewan Rough Riders built up a 22 to nothing lead very early in the second quarter. Since then, Ottawa has been chipping away, and now it's a 10-point lead, 22 to 12 the score, and Saskatchewan with the football at their own 35-yard line. We're early in the third quarter here at Taylor Field. So pow pow. Quickly to Michael Elarms, and Al Washington has him at the 40-yard line and holds the gain to just five. Elarms seemed to uh, be unsure of just where he wanted to run with that football. Well, what great coverage by Washington. Watch him start up to the outside. It looked like he was going to be the containment man here, and he saw the ball thrown over his head and got back very, very quickly to get in on the tackle. Great pursuit by Al Washington, former Ohio Stater. Good play. Second down and five for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Pow Pow goes to the underneath receiver, which is Craig Ellis. And he makes a good move to pick up first down yardage at the 50-yard line. 11 yards on the gain. Broussard making the tackle. Well, it's pretty obvious that the, the effect of this wind here at Taylor Stadium, or Taylor Field, is not really hampering the passing game. It's more effect on the kicking game, field position. First and 10, fakes to Craig Ellis. And that way, comes back to throw to Mike Collymore, and he's got him inside the Ottawa 40-yard line. And Collymore did a good job of coming back to the football. Broussard was there to pin him. A gain of 21 as Willie Thomas, the center for Saskatchewan, limps out of the ball game. And he'll be replaced by Mike Anderson. Good throw by Joe, and you can see Joe's reluctance to take off with the football. There's a lot of quarterbacks in the CFL that would have run with that one, but Joe found an open man, and why not? He got it down to the 38-yard line. Quickly across the middle, he threw this one behind Chris DeFrance at the 30-yard line. Ricky Barton was there to cut him down. Boy, he's doing a quick read, though, on those linebackers. He sees those people cheating up inside, and he's looking for an inside receiver to dump it off quickly. There you see them cheating up and coming quickly. Bang, Joe's ready to get rid of that football. Well, I was impressed with Conrad's Holloway on Friday night, Dale, how well he read the Edmonton defense. And second down, Joe Papa shakes off Ron Angleson, but he can't get away from the second man through. Jack Williams, number 59, back at the 45-yard line. So the Roth Riders of Saskatchewan will lose seven on the play, and that'll bring up third down, and Leschuk will have to punt as the sack pushes them out of field goal range. Boy, Ron Angleson's going to be starting a few ball games sooner or later if he plays like he has today. He was not scheduled to start as Jack Williams, Marshall, Bergingno, and Seal with a front four. High snap. Leschuk gets it down. Gets a good bounce right at the 15-yard line. No return possible, and it's a 41-yard punt, and they'll take that one into the breeze. 9.41 left in the third. Let's go once more to Al. Well, it looks like number 61, uh, nine-year veteran Willie Thomas from the University of Calgary, the big center for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, may be out for the rest of the game. He's incurred a knee injury of sorts, and they're checking it over right now. The report is he may not play anymore today, so Saskatchewan getting some injury problems now. First down, Ottawa. The ball at their own 15-yard line. They trail 22 to 12 here in the third. Quickly to Mike Williams. Brings it to the 22-yard line. Four Rough Riders are there to greet him, led by Terry Irvin and Billy Jackson. Eddie Ray Walker and James Reed. They all got over there. 
James Reed, the former Winnipeg Blue Bomber out of the University of California at Berkeley. Pickup of seven yards on first down, second and three. Big rush from Billy Jackson. Watts gets it off, and it is knocked away by Kenny Hinton. Good defense that time by number 28 of Saskatchewan as he's been burnt a couple of times here in this ball game by Wayman Aldridge. But it was his turn to break the play up. It'll be third down Ottawa. You'll see Jackson coming from the weak side. Saskatchewan brought seven people that time and just outnumbered the Ottawa blockers. Good job by Kenny Hinton as he dove to tip that ball out of the way. This is a hunting contest now, and Ken Clark is going to have the win at his back. For the yeah. first time. <laughs> yeah, he suggested to you he wouldn't get a chance to do this. I know he'll be happy about this one. Gets it high, lets the win take. Fran McDermott from his own 34. Picks his way right up the middle of the field to the 50-yard line. There is a penalty marker down on the far side. A 54-yard punt and a 16-yard return. It's 22 to 12. Saskatchewan leading Ottawa. We'll be back to Sonny Taylor Field in a moment. Be at home next Friday night for CTV's Friday Night Football. And these Saskatchewan Rough Riders will be the visitors and it'll be seen on the entire CTV network starting at 7.30 Eastern. Ten Pat, point lead for Saskatchewan right now. Pat Marsden, Lee Patterson and Bill Stevenson once again will bring you that ball game originating from the CNA in Toronto. From the 36 yard line, Joe Pow Pow on first and ten. Good protection. Almost picked off and should have been intercepted by Al Washington, but one of his own teammates, I think it was Tom Towns, cut in front of him, may have disturbed him a, a touch. But boy, Joe had a lot of time and threw that one and almost cost him. That's the worst throw he's made today, uh, Dale. He threw it right amongst three white jerseys. Elgard, the intended receiver. Al Washington just a little upset with himself, as well he should be. Al Washington, an Eastern All-Star last year, but now a middle linebacker. Until this year, he played in the outside. Second down and ten. Pow Pow oh, is almost picked off by Broussard, who saw that one coming all the way, laid off the receiver, Stu Fraser. And if he makes the interception, he is gone. Well, I'll tell you, Joe threw two bad ones that time. The timing just wasn't there. The breakout man was standing there waiting for the football. I think if there has been a, a knock against Joe over the years, it's been a cons consistent 60-minute ball game. You know, he'll look great one half and, or one quarter and cool off a touch. Les Chuck punting again. Keeps this one low and gets pretty good distance out of it. Bounces back towards the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, and that draws a penalty flag. They were well within the five yards. Bill, I don't want to take any, anything away for, from the Western Riders, but Saskatchewan has been very, very fortunate in this football game. They could have two or three more turnovers very easily. A couple of occasions they have not gotten on the football quickly enough when the pass was thrown behind the quarterback. And No yards. Saskatchewan, first down. Jack Gota, I think, may be a little concerned now that... Uh, Sloppiness setting in as we remind you the game stars and you'll have a chance to vote on them coming up a little bit later on. J.C. Watson first down finds Derek Zeno who's got pretty good speed and a defensive back but Fran McDermott had to get over there and bring him down. And we have an injured Ottawa Rough Rider. It'll be a gain of about five Watts. yards. J.C. Watts shaking up on the play. I didn't see who hit him. I believe it was Billy Jackson, after, just after he'd thrown the football. No, it was up the middle. That's Eddie Lowe. Eddie Lowe. Jackson was also very close to him, but it looked like Lowe might have knocked the wind out of J.C. C. Zeno making the reception. Fran McDermott, probably one of the best open field tacklers in the entire Canadian Football League as a defensive back. And he saved a couple of big gainers with, with stops like that. J.C. out for one play. Bernard Quarles, third-year 
quarterback, formerly with the Calgary Stampeders and the University of Hawaii, Hawaii will replace him for at least one play. It's second down and about six yards to go for Ottawa. Mike Quarles. Throwing incomplete and trying to get to Williams and Terry Irvin providing the coverage. Irvin already has two interceptions this afternoon. J.C. shaking off the effects of that last hit by Eddie Lowe. So it'll be third down for Ottawa and the punting unit led by Ken Clark. Uh, they're going to try a field goal here, a 55-yarder. Clark, of course, is the holder for the Ottawa Rough Riders. This is certainly the day for it. The wind is going pretty good right now, and it's a fairly consistent wind which the field goal kicker needs. Well, of course, this will put them within a converted touchdown of Saskatchewan if they can make it. Dorsey, and 40 or more yards last year, was good at 7 out of 10. This one from 55 it's yards. It has the distance. It is good. Good, strong kick by Dean Dorsey, and now it's a 22 to 15 ball game, man. Battle Rough Riders have closed within a converted touchdown after being down 22 to zip. And Saskatchewan scored their 22 points in 15 minutes plus one play. So it's been an Ottawa-dominated football game since that point as far as putting points on the board. Frank J.C. Watts has been talking to Coach Shamas. His, his left shoulder is the problem. He's having trouble lifting his left arm. I don't know. Uh, J.C. wants to go back in right away, but we'll wait and see what the coach decides. From the 35-yard line, Saskatchewan now on first and 10. They set up the screen to David Conrad, blocking in front. He's got a first down. He's out to the Saskatchewan 49-yard line. Making the tackle for the Ottawa Rough Riders after a gain of 14 yards, Tom Towns. Fred Fleming points out to us that Willie Thomas is back in the lineup at that offensive center spot. So. Obviously, his injury was not that serious. The handoff to Craig Ellis. He's got close to five as he nears midfield, pushed back by Towns. Gentlemen, what happened with Willie Thomas, he got up and took the pack off and tried his knee out and worked on it and then decided he was okay to go, and they gave him the green light. So they make him tough, those offensive linemen, Frank. Well, there he is, number 61, taking a shot at Washington, the linebacker, and it looks like he's all right. He drives Washington back almost 10 yards. Good job. Second down and five. Shotgun for Joe Pow Pow. Deep for Mike Elarms. He caught the ball, but it popped loose, and I think Saskatchewan's got it inside think, the 25 yard line. I think he got it back himself, Dale. There's a flag down in the offensive backfield. I think Saskatchewan was caught for holding. What a great effort by Elarms, which will be. Brought back, but boy, oh boy, what a great catch and recovery after really being nailed. Holding, Saskatchewan number 65. Second that was Chris team. Siegler, I believe, the safety rookie from Indiana that got the shot on him. Watch him coming over from that safety spot, number 38. Boy, that takes a pretty alert receiver to recover from that Ooh. kind of shot and, and pick up the football. 4.45 remains in the third quarter, and Saskatchewan has this win against them for only that much longer. Penalty wiping out a 34-yard gain. Second down and 15. The ball at the Saskatchewan 44. Pow Pow moving around, firing to Craig Ellis at the Ottawa 50-yard line. And it should be a first down. Boy, did you see Jocko come over there and pat him on the back? Great catch by Greg Ellis. And I'm sure that Coach God is very happy with this drive after suffering a what looked like a drive ending, ending penalty. Just a fine, fine diving reception. 16 yard gain, just getting back to that field goal. Dean Dorsey kicked 55 yarder, club record, breaking the previous mark of 53 yards set by Jerry Oregon. Over the middle, Ray Elgard's got running room. Good tackle by Broussard in the opening field. Elgard gets it to the Ottawa 37-yard line. Another first down, a pickup of 13. It's five or six for Elgard, is it not, Dale, over the course of the day's play? Checking with Bob Lees, that's five for 81 yards for number 81. Big factor very early in this ballgame. 
327 now remaining in the third quarter. They seem to be going back to the things now that worked so well for them in the early part of the game. Ellis, the handoff from Pow Pow, picks up close to five as he nears the 31 yard line. Second down, Engelson. Boy, is he having himself an afternoon defensively for Ottawa as you look at Ellis? And Pow Pow. Three minutes remaining, third quarter. Saskatchewan on the move now. Second down and five. Well, they kept the football an awful long time. Go, Big Green! Pow Pow going deep for Collymore, and he just missed him. Boy, Collymore had made the move on Broussard and got in behind him. And that'll bring on the field goal unit. Looks like Broussard slipped a little bit when he made that move, and Collimore was wide open. Good offensive drive, and it would have been six points that Joel thrown this just a yard or so shorter. However, we do have Dave Ridgeway in the ball game, and with a 22-15 score, this would be helpful to Saskatchewan. Ridgeway, of course, last year, July 29, 1984, against Ottawa, set a CFL record with eight field goals. This one hangs up in that breeze and bounces at the two-yard line. Ricky Barton has it in the end zone, will give up a single point. Could be an important single. And it is now a 23-15 ball game in favor of Saskatchewan over Ottawa, and we'll be back in just a moment. Here's the trip for the sports of the year, the Saskatchewan the 33rd annual $250 dinner. We have two minutes and 16 seconds left third quarter. Time now to take a look at our nominees for the offensive game star this afternoon. Two from Saskatchewan, Joe Pow Pow number six, and Craig Ellis number 33. Two from Ottawa, Wayman Ulrich number eight, and Derek Zeno number 26. The numbers to call, depending on who you want to vote for, who you feel deserves to be the offensive game star. From the 35-yard line, Ottawa first and 10. They trail by eight, Wayman Ulrich. From J.C. Watts, got a couple of key blocks and picks up a first down as he gets to the Ottawa 47-yard line. McDermott and James Reed making the tackle. And that'll get Aldridge a few more calls. <laughs> and the defensive nominees. Terry Irvin, Eddie Lowe, Saskatchewan, Ricky Barton, Greg Marshall from Ottawa. First and 10 for the Ottawa Rough Riders in their own 47. Picked off. Second-year safety. The fourth interception against the Ottawa Rough Riders this afternoon. And the Saskatchewan Rough Riders will take over at their own 40-yard line. Derek Zeno finally. Tudor out of bounds. Bill, before the football game, I talked to George Brancato, and I said, what is the number one thing you want to do against this run-and-shoot type of offense? And he said, We'd like to, first of all, disguise our defenses, but secondly, we'd like to bump those receivers and not let J.C. Watts look and hit right away. Knock them off their pattern and make him go to a secondary receiver. That's what they did right there. And Glenn Suter intercepts J.C. Watts, first down Saskatchewan. Pressure, shovel past the rail guard, and Ottawa oh. defense that perfectly. Borgio made the tackle. Greg Marshall also got a piece of L guard. That was a play that Saskatchewan <laughs> used very effectively last year. But I think everybody is wise to it now. Well, I'll tell you, there were a couple of white jerseys that he threw that right in between. And if Elgar doesn't make a great one-handed grab, another Saskatchewan turnover would have occurred. Into the last minute here in the third quarter, Saskatchewan losing a couple on first down, second and 12. Again, the shotgun formation. Paul Paul quickly across the middle to Ray Elgard. He can break tackles. The big guy has a first down inside the 25. Broussard, the corner, finally came over to the middle to stop Elgard after a gain of 19. Elgard has now picked up 100 yards in six catches. First down, Saskatchewan at the Ottawa 23. Papa looking to Elgard this time on the outside. Elgard will score! Proving hard to bring down once he makes a reception on the very last play of the third quarter. Ray Elgar put 
gets his first touchdown in 1985 on his seventh reception of the afternoon. What a day. Watch him just break it to the outside. Good throw by Joe Pow Pow, and not one Ottawa Rough Rider can bring him down, not even two from time to time. A 24-yard score, and Saskatchewan will go ahead 30-15 at the end of three quarters of play. We'll be back to Taylor Field right after this. by Dave Ridgeway and he puts this into the end zone and it's not going to roll out. And it's going to stay there for a single point. Right at the 20. Maybe, maybe. Well, boy, it's a good thing somebody touched it. Now, Saskatchewan, of course, is on side. That could be a touchdown if they stand there. I know. Well, I think the official called that the ball rolled out of bounds. I do not believe it will be a single point. Uh, I think... Uh, I thought he did.